Inside Michigan Football is presented by Meyer. Hi again, friends, and welcome back inside the big house for another edition of Inside Michigan Football. Doug Karsh alongside John Jansen. Saturday, the Wolverines escaped with a win. Had a familiar feel. When you went undefeated in 1997, you guys had the Iowa game. You're going to have some of these games along the way, and it comes down to leadership on the sideline. It comes down to leadership from the coaches, but it comes down to execution and that never say die attitude, never out of it. It came down to nine seconds left in this game. We were all a huge sigh of relief when it was done, but you've got to have these if you have the hopes of winning a championship. Well, let's get the highlights underway. First half, Wolverines first play, it was Blake Corum going for 37 yards. Blake Corum has been so explosive. I'm happy to have him in the first half, over 100 yards again, but his ability to make guys miss and run away is, is, is best in the nation. All right, Ronnie Bell goes for 16 yards on this play. They got the pass game going early. They did, and when we've talked about Michigan's pass game, and it could be better, but when you're able to start off a drive with Blake Corum, Ronnie Bell, move the sticks down the field, gives you confidence that you're going to have another opening drive that end up in a score. All right, here's another example of the pass game going early. Colston Loveland, and we go to Jansen Vision. So as we line up for this play, Colston Loveland lines up at the right tight end position, and as he comes and runs his route, he's going to go right at the linebacker, what he wants to do is scrape right off the backside of this linebacker here. He uses his body to shield the, the player that's on him. But here's the other thing. When you watch J.J. McCarthy, he gets this ball off, holds it just long enough before pressure gets there and delivers a strike to Colston Loveland. And that's what you need to continue to move the sticks and get down inside the red zone. The Wolverines would follow that up with a Blake Corum short touchdown run, his 18th touchdown run of the season. And most impressively, Michigan now under J.J. McCarthy, 10 starts, nine opening drive scores. They've been able to start the game well. It's the rest of the first half where they got to continue to improve on. But when you got a running back like Blake Corum, and we kind of called it in the booth, no shock that they're going to go between the tackles to score the touchdown. All right, the Illini first possession. They go three and out. Here's heavy pressure R.J. Moten in the backfield. Well, when you get a chance with R.J. Moten to – and, and Jesse Minter does this from every level, whether it's Junior Colson, Mike Barrett coming from the linebacker level, this time it's R.J. Moten. You just never know where the pressure's coming from. Could have used more of this during the game, but right here it came up big. After a long punt, Michigan got backed up in the shadow of their own goalpost, but this play, a screen pass to Blake Corum flipped the field. I've been waiting for a screen play to Blake Corum all season long. They pulled it out here against Illinois. We saw it with Isaiah Gash later in the game, but when anytime you get Blake Corum in open field, you're going to have the opportunity for plays like this. Illini second possession. This wide receiver screen gets completely blown up by Junior Colts. Yeah, his ability to fight across the face of defenders and then be able to put a foot in the ground, come back and make a play is one of the things that makes him special. It's 7-0 Michigan as we go to the second quarter. The Illini facing a fourth and one. Once again, we go to Jansen Vision. And this one is Mason Graham. When you talk about block destruction, he lines up here at the left defensive tackle position. And I want, to wa I want you to watch him come off the ball and just buckle this guard. He'll come with the left arm over swim and destroy it in the backfield. Anytime you've got a freshman making plays like that, you know you got something special, but anytime you can, you can make a play like that and destroy a block in the backfield for a lost yardage play on fourth down, that's winning football. That's a true freshman in the trenches in the Big Ten in November making plays. The Illini got some offense going. However, later, Chase Brown had a couple of nice runs. Then they get the ball to Isaiah Williams on a reverse. He goes for good yardage. But then Mason Graham, that kid again, making a play. This for a loss of two. Yeah, I mean, Mason Graham all season long has been that guy, Mozzie Smith, to be able to shed blocks but his ability to extend on defensive linemen and be able to get away from them and make plays is, it's impressive. That loss of two meant Illinois didn't get a first down. They had a fourth and one, but then they false started on that fourth and one, which set up a field goal. It was 7-3. All right, Blake Corum, here's a 25-yard run where he's breaking tackles and weaving through traffic and gets Michigan into Illinois territory again. I mean, what more do we need to say? I kind of feel like a broken record when we talk about Blake Corum, but his ability to change directions, his ability to gain yards after contact, it's, it's a large reason why Michigan has had success. But this was the scariest play of the first half. He takes a hit on the knee, fumbles the ball. Turns out they called this a fumble. It was Illinois ball. Blake hobbled off. We saw him again 
Most importantly, Jim Harbaugh told you post game it was a bruise. Yeah, it's a bruise. They don't think there's anything structurally wrong. I'm sure they're going to continue to go through some more tests, but it's a matter of now they've got to, you know, manage the bruise and make sure that he's back for next week. So it was 7 3 at the half. We've got all the heroics straight ahead. You're watching Inside Michigan Football. Inside Michigan Football is brought to you by Meyer, presenting sponsor of the 2022 Michigan football season and proud supporter of hundreds of local sports teams across the Midwest. Second half highlights here on Inside Michigan Football, Doug Karsh, John Jansen, and the Illini get the ball and Michigan gets a three and out. Here's a big play, Junior Colson and Taylor Upshaw combined to drop Chase Brown for a loss. The defense needed to set the tone coming out in the second half, and we've talked about it so many times this year. If they can do that three and out, now it's the offensive's turn to try and respond. Jamon Green in coverage here. Illinois forced to punt. Now here's Blake Corn. He came out the tunnel and gave it a go in the second half. He goes for five yards. And I mean, even hurt, he's better than most guys are at 100%. And that's something that Blake Corn was trying to manage today. And it was great to see him out there. Here's a third down, Cornelius Johnson. JJ fires a fastball. 14 yards, move the chains. And when JJ needs to put it on him and he get, needs to get rid of the ball, he's got as strong of an arm and as an accurate arm as, as there is. Underrated huge play here, drive stalls. This is 46 yards, which is well within Jake Moody's range, but it's into a stiff wind, which affected the game all day long. And Jim Harbaugh knew they were one yard within the line of, hey, we're gonna go for it at this point. And he had watched Jake Moody warm up. Jake Moody gave him the thumbs up and knew that he at least had a chance and was going to have the leg to go for it. Every point counted. Michigan led at 10-3. But here are the Illini. Chase Brown goes 11 yards on the first play of this drive, and this is where they started to get it going. Yeah, and this is where Michigan's going to have to address some things up front. You can't get controlled at the line of scrimmage the way they were. And when you have a running back like Chase Brown, you could be as good as you can be throughout the course of a game, but you've got to be so focused every single time because he can always break one. Gets a third down just after that on third and short move the chains and here's third and two. He's good. He goes eight yards for a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 one of those things where a player is going to make some plays and their offensive line give credit to Illinois. Their offensive line played extremely well. All right, so Michigan comes back now without Blake Corum, CJ Stokes, the freshman goes nine yards on a third and five. The depth, the guys that had to step up, whether it was C.J. Stokes, Isaiah Gash, Tavi Dunlop, they all had a hand in this win. You mentioned Isaiah Gash. This is a third and 10 screen play, the second one Michigan ran on the day, and it also converted a first down. Got to get these guys in the open field. You get guys out front. This one, I think it was uh, Giovanni is out in the middle to be able to block downfield. You could spring them for some big ones. Here's a fourth and six. It looked like the Illini jumped, so Michigan thought they had a free shot, but this pass incomplete to Andrew Anthony, and Illinois took over. One that should have been caught. I think Andrew's going to look at this one and say, you know what, I should have caught this ball. Great pass by JJ. Great decision to go downfield because I thought it was offsides as well. Shortly after that, here's Chase Brown going 37 yards for a touchdown. And now, as third quarter turns to fourth, Illinois leads it 17 to 10 and they get the ball back. And this is where the fans get into it. And this is a big play. This is a bad snap, you know, where the home field advantage matters. And Michigan, on a miscommunication on that snap, they get the ball back. Well, we talked uh, about that time. Somebody had to step up and make a play. And this was an opportunity. Hey, ball's on the ground. Just make sure that, hey, it becomes our ball at some point. Well, it was after a punt, and this is the punt return. Ronnie Bell, somebody make a play, right? Ronnie Bell makes a play. Yeah, captain's got to step up when you need them to. We talked about that, that, that uh, you know, in the Iowa game. Brian Greasy in the second half stepped up. Ronnie Bell, it was his, they, they called on him today. 43 yards. Here, J.J. finds Colston Loveland for 11 yards, and that sets up another Jake Moody field goal from 46 yards out and that makes it 17 to 13. All right, ensuing drive for the Illini. They get into Michigan territory. A third and eight, Rod Moore makes a great tackle here to set up the Illini on a fourth and eight, and they go QB draw, and here comes DJ Turner up from his spot in the secondary to get the stop, a big tackle on fourth and eight. You talk about closing speed, this and a guy that just wants to simply make a play, that was DJ Turner. 
All right, Michigan takes over, and here we go. Back to Jansen Vision. Colston Loveland again, the freshman tight end for 27 yards. And we saw this play last year against Penn State. It was Eric All, and I wish we had Jansen Vision at that time. We didn't. We do now. I want you to watch Ronnie Bell coming across the middle. You've got, uh, I think this is Cornelius Johnson coming off, uh, across the middle. Andrew Anthony coming across the middle. Everybody here in the secondary has their eyes on him. Colston Loveland, all he's going to do is leak out through over here, and that's where he's going to get hit. And I want you to keep an eye on this linebacker right here. His eyes are in the backfield. He sees Colston Loveland, but doesn't pay enough attention to him. Colston Loveland finds himself open, and it's a huge play for Michigan. All right, we pick it up with a third and eight. This was a huge play for Michigan. JJ drops to the snap. We wondered if his knee was down. Eventually, he completes it to Roman Wilson, or correction, Cornelius Johnson for 11 yards. Hey, composure, that's what you need from a quarterback. He didn't panic, he grabbed the ball, tried to make something happen, and was able to pick up a first down. Michigan trailing here, 17-13. This is one of several do or die plays. Fourth and four, Roman Wilson goes in motion, and JJ finds him. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not easy to hit a wide receiver who's running away from you over his shoulder. It was a great pass and a nice job by, uh, by Roman Wilson of catching it. Jim Harbaugh decides not to go for it on fourth and 11 with just over three minutes left. He takes the Jake Moody field goal and this cuts it to 17 to 16. That decision would pay dividends later. The defense needs a three and out. And here Illinois goes to their money man, Chase Brown, and the defense without Michael Morris steps up and gets a stop. Hey, at different points throughout the season, you've got to put your foot in the ground. You've got to draw a line in the sand. Whatever type of, of analogy you want to use, Michigan's defense did that late in the fourth quarter. So the Wolverines get the ball back, and here we go. This is a fourth and three from the Illinois 45-yard line, and J.J. Fines backup running back Isaiah Gash. What a great play by Isaiah Gash. Kind of the same throw that we just talked about with Roman Wilson. Tough throw for, for J.J., but Isaiah Gash had just dropped a big play, a conversion for a first down. They come right back to him, short-term memory, and it pays off, makes a big play. They had just put that play in this week. All right, Wolverines take a shot. Here's a pass interference, Ronnie Bell, and this was big. Uh, yeah, I thought Ronnie Bell did a great job of using his body to shield the defender. JJ put it to where only Ronnie could get it, and they, they forced the pass interference. All right, here's under heavy pressure, JJ finds Cornelius Johnson. This play got reviewed, but they called it a catch, and that sets up Jake Moody Waning seconds, 35 yards, we go to Jansen Vision. Uh, this is the best view that you're ever gonna see of a game-winning field goal. And I'm just, I'm gonna have a little bit of fun with this because everybody knows how hard I am on kickers. All right, first of all, great protection. Snap is good, hold is good. Thank you, Mr. Robbins. And then the whole goal, you're gonna see right here, I'm gonna highlight the field goal, is to kick it right down the middle. Let's see how Mr. Moody does. Boom. I mean, you couldn't split the uprights better than that in a moment that is a, it's a legacy moment for Jake Moody. Career field goals made, 65. It's a Michigan record, and he tied the record with still another game to go, and hopefully a few more after that with Remy Hamilton for the most field goals in a season. It was so much fun Mozzie to watch him. Mozzie Smith called him Money Mooney after the game. Illinois with a Hail Mary at the end. It falls incomplete. We call it a survive and advance kind of game. It, every game from now on out to playoff game, you've got to win this one to have the right to play for a Big Ten championship, to have a right to play into the college football playoffs, and it makes that game, the game, even bigger. Yeah, we check the schedule. They play Ohio State next Saturday. <laughs> Finally! All right, we'll go into the Michigan locker room next here from the head coach, Jim Harbaugh, here on Inside Michigan Football. Never in my entire career, um, actually, High school, middle school, nothing. Um, so that was my first, you know, kind of, I guess, walk off game winner. This week's El Rose Steel Man of the Week is kicker Jake Moody. The graduate student made his final game at the Big House a memorable one with a game winning kick in the closing seconds. Pretty surreal, you know, being my senior day. You don't know for sure until you actually hit it, and right when I hit it, I knew it was right down the middle, and that's such a great feeling. Everybody was celebrating. It was. It was pretty magical. This was unfamiliar territory for the Wolverines, coming back to win in gritty, gutty fashion. J.J. McCarthy telling the team in the second half, quote, we live for games like this. This is everything you could ask for if you're a competitor. Like, you're down, you got 12 minutes left, what are you gonna do? 
Are you gonna fold? Or are you gonna take advantage of the moment? Take advantage of the opportunity and show the world what you could really do. You know, all week you prepare for a dog fight, you prepare for a very tough fight game, and um, yeah, just being a part of such a competitive game is a lot of fun. Michigan now has 15 consecutive home wins, the longest such streak in the Big Ten. We really wanted to set that tone that this is our house, we gotta protect it. We can't let anybody come in our house and you know take that. Big house is our house. And when the other opponent comes through those gates, we lock those gates and make sure they don't walk out with the W. That's also 13 consecutive Big Ten wins for the Wolverines, the longest stretch for the program since winning 16 straight from 1996 through 1998. And as we are all well aware, they'll go for number 14 next weekend in Columbus. For Inside Michigan Football, I'm Ed Kingerski. Today's conversation with Jim Harbaugh is brought to you by Maya. Needed everybody. Needed every single player on the team. Uh, start with uh, Jake Moody. He's going to be a, he's now a Michigan legend. <laughs> yes, he so, is. It's so wonderful. And a uh, great snap by Greg Tarr and, and Brad Robbins. Uh, not just the game winner, but the one into the win. DJ Turner, big fourth down stop. Our defense had a couple big time, uh, big time stops. JJ McCarthy uh, continues to, you know, just I just have faith in him, and uh, and so does our team. We had uh, over 200 yards throwing the football in very windy conditions, um, but uh, yeah, I had a couple sail. But you know, when it was, uh, I think I called him an Ice Man, didn't I? Uh, the Ice Man, like Bjorn Borg uh, or George Gervin. Uh, you know, once again, you, you saw it on display today. You made the decision to call Jake Moody out, go 17-16. Mm -hmm. you, did you talk to the defense at all before they went out there and the importance of getting a stop? Uh, yeah, we gotta gotta have a stop here, guys. Uh, <laughs> and, and Jesse did a great job. Uh, you know, we got the got the run wall going and uh, and and called the timeouts. It was all you know, it was all. The game's on the line. You got to get that. You got to get that stop, and and our guys came up big. Columbus is up next. That trip down there. Yeah. How quickly will you guys turn the page and start focusing on Ohio State? Yeah, we we treated this game today like it was the biggest game in the world, and we'll treat the next game like it's the biggest game in the world, and treat the one after that as like it's the biggest game in the world. That's that's where we're at. We're in uh, we're in we're in playoff mode. Well, congratulations on a big win, Coach, and uh, we'll talk to you on Monday. Thank you. Can you give me a thought on next week? I can't even put into words. It's just everything I dreamed about since stepping on campus here. Everything. I mean, 11-0, 11-0, and the opportunities right in front of us. We're going to go and take advantage of it. All right, John, all season long it felt irresponsible as we got later and later in the year to talk about Ohio State before Ohio State week. It's Ohio State week. The Buckeye team, really good receivers. We're hoping the weather's going to be like it was Saturday in the big house, chilly temperatures. But Michigan, got to get some guys healthy is a big one. Well, it is. And it's, it's really going to come down to whoever can make that trip, whoever's available. It is the expectations for the position. Michigan did their job. They're 11-0. They're going to go down to Columbus with the Big Ten East on the line, a trip to Indy on the line, college football playoffs on the line. And I guarantee you, if anybody is able, they will find a way to get on the field. So a couple things that came out of Saturday. One is guys down the depth chart had to step up. No Mike Morris, no Luke Schoonmaker. Guys stepped up. Isaiah Gash, we saw his big play. And Michigan proved itself in a close game. Like when they had to come up with a drive, a couple of times they did so. Well, they had to come up with a stop. They had to come up with a drive. They had to come up with points. They were able to do all that. And it's not always going to be pretty, but the whole goal is to win the game. And they ended up with two more than Illinois, and that was enough to win this game. J.J. McCarthy's passing stats, not gaudy, but again, now the quarterback knows I need to engineer a fourth quarter drive. I can engineer a fourth quarter drive. And there were times where he had to show great composure. There were times where he had to make a throw. He just had, simply had to, and he was able to get it done. So the Wolverines will take an undefeated record down to Columbus. Kind of feels like th this was a goal tough bar uh, hurdle to clear, but they did it. To be undefeated going down there, it's been a pretty good regular season so far. Are you willing to hop in the truck with windows down? Oh, you God. know how I like last to go to time, Columbus. Last time we went to Columbus, he blasted the victors as we drove up to the shoe, windows down, and I'm like, you're my bodyguard if something goes down. So are you ready to you, be my bodyguard? I, I'm, I'm there. I'm, I got no problem. I own that town. Oh, you do? <laughs> you did as a player. Yeah, I did. <laughs> All right, so Michigan and Ohio State will be back next week on Inside Michigan Football to take a look back at that one. So long.
Inside Michigan Football is brought to you by Meyer, presenting sponsor of the 2022 Michigan football season and proud supporter of hundreds of local sports teams across the Midwest.